Now, <clears throat> a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head, a garland of 12 stars. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood to save from sin, to bring the peace of God where guilt hath been. A new and happy life will then begin. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus to save her soul today, wash every sin away. There's power in the blood of We give thanks to be close to you, to worship together, to look at things that you would have us to do now and in the future, and to be able to um, love one another as you have taught us to. We give thanks in Jesus' name, amen.
Oh, come before his presence and glorify his name. What a, a beauty to know that is a welcome to us as uh, his children, as his family, as his people to come together and to gather and worship him and give him praise. Uh, the beauty for us also is this. Not only is it a welcome to us here that is in the sanctuary, and it is also a welcome to those that are on our conference call live right now, listening to, um, they had listened to the worship music that was playing earlier, coming in just like us, and now we worship together uh, this morning, as well as those that are um, online with our Facebook page and stuff that are watching right now and worshiping right along with us as we praise God as we gather together. In your bulletins um, this morning, along with the welcome, is announcements that go along with what's happening within the church uh, this upcoming week. On Wednesday night, we are in the book of Matthew, and we are at the tail end of chapter uh, 19 or 16 or something like that. I think it's 19. Verse 16 is what it might be. It's down in that area, and uh, I have no idea. I do know we're at the toward the end of chapter 19 or in the middle or whatever. Um, something about the children. That's where we're at. So I'm just giving you some hints, and now you're going like, what in the world? So now you'll look at chapter 19 in Matthew and join us on Wednesday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon downstairs as we continue to physical distance and all that stuff. But we have our Bible study, and there is an opportunity if you can't make it uh, in person. You can actually join on Zoom and watch Pastor Mark um, lead us in uh, that Wednesday afternoon Bible study. As always, uh, Sunday morning at 1045, we will gather um, even next week. And there is things for the kids to do. They are going to be doing, they are actually in the same thing. As I was preparing for uh, uh, the word this morning uh, throughout the weeks um, and then preparing the kids' lesson, they are actually in the same area that we are in Hebrews. And so that's where they are at um, so I guess if you want to go down and have some fun with Hebrews, you can go down and make some crafts of uh, coloring your hand or whatever. So that's what's ha taking place with the kids downstairs during the service this morning. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are still doing um, what I just call it computer conversation and community gathering where we can just kind of gather together uh, downstairs um, you can have some help with um, some certain things. We have found out that some things are not as easy as it is told to us. And so we enjoy each other's company of community and conversation. And so it is actually just a joy down there on Wednesday, excuse me, Tuesdays and Thursdays between 1 and 3. And it's come and, come and go as you please. It's not like a strict, oh, two hours. You can come and go as you please, 1 to 3 on Wednesdays, on when, excuse, Tuesdays and Thursdays, <laughs> Wednesdays is Bible study, and sometimes, actually every Wednesday, a few hours before Bible study, I get on my Facebook page, and I bump it over to the church's Facebook page, which is in your bulletin, and I give what I call, I've been calling, Hello Again Wednesday. That's what it's called. And on Hello Again Wednesday, I talk about anything and everything, and sometimes um, it's good. No, I'm just kidding. I enjoy it as a conversation that I have. Uh, last week was about prayer and how important it is to pray for one another. This is what God desires from us. And, and sometimes I say check it out because last week I noticed that uh, the blurbs going around the, the world was, we need to pray to hate someone. And that just threw me for a loop. And so I did a little thing. You know what? I don't think God, in fact, I know God doesn't want us to pray to hate someone, especially when in his word it says to love even your enemies. So I did a little blurb on that on Wednesday. So did others, I found out. I flipped, and oh, wow, someone else is talking about it too. So check it out. Hello again Wednesday, and usually it's around noontime or something like that. And the reason being, the big finale is so that I can give a big invite to Wednesday Bible study at 4 p.m. So I'm going to loop right back to that. So uh, just a couple uh, little things then. Uh, um, 
there was, uh, in fact, they were here on Easter, uh, Vicki and, and her son, um, in the passing of her husband, 52 years old, to the virus. And so we are going to actually, they got baptized here a couple years ago. And so uh, she asked if we could have the memorial service here. And so May 1st, it is in your bulletin, May 1st, you are, you know, we have enough space where people can come. It will only be a few that will be here. So I just want you all to know, but she has asked if the church would like to. May 1st, which is a Saturday, we're going to have a memorial, a small memorial for Patrick uh, Dowland at 10 a.m. Uh, and it's, it's that early because later on that day, uh, her and I, and actually whoever would like to, it's kind of hard, but um, she is having uh, the uh, graveside ceremony that day also, which is in Long Beach. But 10 a.m. here at the sanctuary, we will have a lovely service uh, remembering uh, Patrick, my, my dear friend. Um, thank you for physical distancing. Thank you for mask wearing. Thank you for using the uh, hand sanitizers coming up the stairs, hand sanitizers on the welcome table. And you will notice on the welcome table, there are things you can look at, such as a spring devotion from Pathways. You can also grab a free bottle of water um, to uh, quench your thirst. There's uh, the opportunity to, um, if you have people that you know of in conversations that talk about college, I actually have some of our Christian colleges and universities uh, back there with some of their uh, stuff that they give us also. And then very lastly, on the back of your announcement page is the address for Phyllis Owens, our secretary. Um, she is up in Reseda. And it's one thing to rattle off that very long address, and it's easier to put it on a piece of paper. It is now in your bulletin. If you would like to send her a note, a card, um, a letter even, um, she would very much appreciate it. So it is her, and, and it is all those letters. The letters don't make up any kind of word, but it's a bunch of letters in an order, and it's a specifically Grand Cell Village. That is where this, uh, they own a bunch of organizations, and this is the one that she is in at Grand Cell Village. Make sure you put Phyllis's name on the, the letter so that they know who to give it to, and the regular address down on Tampa Avenue, Okay. Um, the other thing is, and it's a little bit more difficult, but if you'd ever like to speak with her, I did give the phone number to the organization, and you can call. And if you call, what takes place is they get your name, and then they have to go, and she might be in a group. Um, that's what happened to me uh, last week. She might be in a session, or she might be doing uh, physical therapy. There's things that she does at this place uh, that she's at but they will locate her, let her know you called, and then maybe even give you a time to call back or something like that. So you can call. It is a little bit more difficult, though. I just wanted you to know that. Letters and cards are great. Um, and uh, it's for, as I say usually, look around. There's a lot of people that are unable to be attending with in person. Some are listening. You know what? Give them a call. Give them a card also. You know what? Dollar Tree, dollar big old pack of cards for a dollar, whatever. And let's, let's share within the community of one another as uh, God asks us to do with love, okay? So a big welcome to each and every one of you. Sorry it took so long. Let's, let's do what we started with. Let's worship God this morning. Power and love as we sing. 
This morning as we are to pray there are things within the in your bulletin there is a a, a sheet of paper with a uh, our prayer request that we remember throughout the week and it, it does seem quite extensive but at the same time it's those that are desiring for other individuals to join along with them in prayer and so that's why we list it out so that we can pray for family, we can pray for friends and co-workers. And in that time frame, we have this understanding as you go through that list that there are individuals that have health issues. And so we pray for those. There are individuals that have financial issues um, that is taking place. There are those that um, just, well, as you go through the list, we pray for our, our city, our leaders. We pray for our state our leaders. We pray for our country, our leaders. And as you, as you watch the news and as we rem remember friends that we have even listed within there, we pray for those in other countries and things that they are going through. Um, that uh, um, where our friends and families are living within those situations. We pray for Corey and Abby Scottsdale uh, that are in Botswana, Africa that are missionaries and just are just uh, doing a mighty work as God places upon their heart with the individuals that they come in contact with. And so we're praying for them also. And there's probably things that um, aren't even listed on there. There's things that are within our hearts that we pray for. And every week I'll, I will ask, if you especially want me to remember you in prayer, the, the issues that you have, the praise, the joys that you have, whatever, if you would like me to remember you, especially within prayer throughout my prayer time this week, go ahead and raise your hand. And I will especially I, I make a mental memory of the, the individuals that would like the prayer um, especially along with the list. The other thing that we have um, is on our prayer calendar, we pray for individuals. It happens to be Christian is today um, on this Sunday on your prayer calendar. I will, we give those out so that you can see days and things to pray for also. And we pray for, uh, there are special events that are taking place within the hearts of people. So we pray for those too. Join me together as we pray. God, it is so good to be in the house worshiping you. The songs that we have sung, we use um, our hearts, our minds to just lift up praise and honor to you. Uh, and they're just mere words sometimes because we can't express the magnitude of how much we love you, God. And we are so grateful that even that is drowned out by your love for us. And so, God, we ask that uh, you'll accept our praise unto you. You already know everything that is listed. You already know everything that is on our hearts to the deepest part. But still we join together, uh, just lifting up the request, being reminded that there are individuals who, who uh, need you spiritually. There are individuals that need you through health and the things that we talked about. So we join in, and may we be reminded throughout the week to, con to continue to pray for those that we have talked about. God, we pray for especially those that are um, in distant lands from us, just family and friends that bring about connection. And we pray for every situation that they're in, where they're at, God. We are thankful for the blessings that you have upon us. 
We do not want to be uh, forgetful or take for granted how much you um, are at work within our lives, how much you look out for us, how much you love us. And God, we just um, want to thank you. The words that are about to be spoken, even as we hear scriptures and as we, as we um, continue in worship, and then we, we, we take in what is upon the hearts for us to uh, grow closer to you or even just draw closer to you, God, help us to have a greater understanding, not on our part, but what you will reveal to us. Again, we praise you and thank you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 7. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me, and you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen, and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. See how I used him to display my power among the peoples? I made him a leader among the nations. You also will command nations you do not know, and people unknown to you will come running to obey, because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you glorious. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. Jesus would I know more of his grace to others show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more more about Jesus more more about Jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me Let me learn more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness. See. Testament reading is in Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. 
But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who you are. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. God's mighty plan, Jesus died for us. And I, I do like Romans in the fact that you cannot get more simple. Jesus died. God did it for a purpose to save the planet. And all you have to do, he gives this great starting point, just believe. Anyone who believes. And I, I liked how uh, this the area of text went. It doesn't matter who you are. See, we live, we live in a world right now where people are like pointing fingers. They're them. They're them. They're them. And God has no fingers to point like that. Because whoever believes, he did it. And I love how he even holds back. Why? Because he's fair. He's just. You know, you can't just get this. A little bit. God is so encompassing of everything, and you are included in that plan if you would just believe. Wow. Isaiah 2 is just as great. <laughs> I'm going to be in Hebrews chapter 4, and I did choose verse 16. That's like this big Wow, this is like, wow, this is so important. At least it is to me. And I, I would hope, I, once I t uh, talk through this, you're like, wow, yep, I understand, Pastor. This is mine too. Uh, I take, this is so cool how God is for me. We're, we're going to talk about mercy and grace in just a small atmosphere because it is so huge with God. And as I was preparing uh, for that one verse, downstairs the kids are doing 14, 15, 16, and I think, um, and I think uh, 17, if, I, if it goes uh, just 16. Okay. They're doing 14, 15, 16 downstairs right now. And uh, just uh, there, uh, I just had to say this. Maybe, maybe you'll see them when they come up because uh, they have two ways of doing a couple of crafts. But if they do it in like what I would say 3D, they're actually planting something. God plants within the life of an individual the fact that God gives Jesus as a helping hand to us and the beauty that goes with it. So that's what they're doing downstairs. And we're going to get to that same point as we go. As I was preparing, though, it was actually more than just that one verse. I want us to get an understanding to God's mercy and grace. Where does it even come from? What is it even for? In, I, in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, bear with me as I start actually at verse 1. God's promise of entering into his rest still stands. So uh, the writer here, it, it, as it's taken place, there must have been some talk. There must have been some issues about what happened in the past and all these promises God had. It looks like God stopped giving those promises. It looked like, and even the worst part, that God is giving up on his people of that final resting place, that eternity with him. 
But here, Paul, as he's writing right here, he talks this way, that God's promise of entering his rest still stands. You know, woohoo, yes, that's awesome to know. I see the end point is still there. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might, that some of you might fail to experience it. See, as it's being written here and passed down to us, the sadness is that even with, as you, we, that one scripture there that, that Lauren read, that all you have to do is believe. Even with the simplest of things of, of having Jesus as your Savior, there's going to be people that are not going to experience not only the path that God has for them on this planet, but they're not going to experience all the eternity, this resting place, this, uh, you know, and you, there's so many scriptures to grab. I, I, Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. Okay, let's get a little bit more personal. I go to prepare a place for Brent. I go to prepare a place for, put your name there. And with that, that place still stands. But in all of reality, there may be some that will fail to experience it. And that is so disheartening. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. So when, when it was announced in Moses' time, when it was announced in Joshua's time, that same announcement, I love how the writer is here, hundreds of years later, it's to us too. Can I say, I will say this now, it is to us too. That resting place is still standing. And it's good news. But it did them no good, talking about in the past, because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. And that is very important. Only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world, we know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all of his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. The, Paul's bringing them to an understanding. You know what? You remember when God said, this is it. This is how you get there. And their hearts, and we're going to get to them in just a sec, but they just wouldn't follow that, those words. They wouldn't follow the words God had given to them. And so later on, God's saying, and because of that, remember what the scripture said that Lauren read? God is fair and just, and that has not changed. And so it continues on. They will never enter my place of rest, even though... Um, it's been ready since the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scripture. I read all of that. Da, 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 da. Now, I'm down at verse six. So God's rest is there for people to enter. I, see, as I'm reading through this, the book, uh, uh, this chapter of Hebrews in four, and you, it's like, oh, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, this is kind of depressing. This is really cool. Oh, this is kind of depressing. And yet at verse six, God's rest is there for the people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. See, I don't, I don't want to just rush through some of these words because, you know what, I, I'm one of those this and that kind of thought process sometimes. If they disobey God, and right here in the scriptures, passed down to us, if you disobey God or they disobey God and they didn't enter into the rest when they was talking about the promised land, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too confused, but when there's talking to Moses and Jacob, uh, Joshua, that's the land over there. But if you disobey me, and as you, and, um, as you read through those stories, you're going to find out disobeying comes with justice. They disobeyed God. So God set another time. Here's that high part. Yoo-hoo! God set another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. 
Can you imagine as, as these stories are being passed down with the ups and downs and that you still get this glorious good news that, hey, guess what? God has not given up on you. He has not quit with his promise. And so today is the day. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God for all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fail. And so as, as he's talking, I, I could just, sometimes I picture as I read some of this, that I'm just sitting there listening to him. Wow, he's really deep. He's got the highs, he's got the lows. The promise is still there for me to enter into this rest. And we, you know what, some of the coolest things, I don't want to labor no more. You know, I, I labor, and sometimes when I labor, I come to home, I go, well, it, it happened this week. There was one day I, I sat down at the dinner table, and I went, man, I am tired. I worked hard today. And, and, and Connie's always like, I'm just going to say it. Oh, honey, you work hard. Uh, she might not call me honey. I don't remember what she said on that part. You work hard every day. And, and I told, the conversation went like this. Yeah, you, you might be right, because there's days where I'm like always going. But then there's some of those days like, oh, my, that was hard. I feel it everywhere. I don't want to labor no more. But greater than that, I don't want to disobey God and fail. You understand what I'm saying? It's not about getting the prize. See, it is the, I'm saying it wrong. It is about the prize, but it's not about, I'm just going to do, 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 do all that I think God wants me to do, and then I'll have the prize. No, we have to obey God. Now we're back to conversation with God. Speak with God. God, what is it that you want me to do? Who do you want me to talk to? Do you not want me to talk? Sometimes God does not want you to talk to people. Uh, I'm just the way it is. See, we think in our hearts, oh, I got to go talk to that person. And God's saying, no, 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 no. I got someone else to handle that. I want you to go over here. Now, if I was to throw in a story, it would be Jonah, huh? Jonah, I want you to go over here. No, 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 I don't want to go over there. I don't even like those people. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> No, do not disobey God or we will fail. Verse 12 in Hebrews chapter 4. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. I, I, I like the way that version says it out. It, for me, it is very easy to understand. When it talks about obey God, there's things that go along with obeying God. Know this, he knows everything about you. You can't sit there and lie. You can lie to any person. And if you're a good liar, oh, let's be honest, if you're a good liar, man, you'll make that lie work and they'll believe every word you say. What are we, what are we and <laughs> And it's still wrong. Because as you lie in the world, you are held sometimes accountable to the people that you are talking to. But then sometimes we mess up and make it that thought process that it's all about being accountable to them when all of reality in this area of text, in everything, you are accountable to God. And I'm going to say, 
when, when, I'm account, when I realize I'm accountable to God, then it makes me think about everything else. Understand what I'm saying? It's not about thinking through a lie. It's not about thinking through deception. It's not about thinking through any other sin that you want to put in your life that you know goes against God. I'm going to make it simple. What is sin? Anything that goes against God. Anything that is uh, co- co- completely opposite of the of the the scriptures that we have, where it gives us kind of like help along the way. Anything that's contrary or opposite of this is against God. It is sin. Anything that completely goes against God is sin. And so with that, knowing that I'm accountable to God who looks at things that way, it makes me look at people in other ways. Because you know what a lie will do? Eventually hurt someone. I mean, you think you get away with it, but you hurt someone. Worse yet, in our scripture here today, you have failed because you're accountable to God. Okay. Whew, I told you there's some highs and lows in here. Whoa. That was pretty low. <laughs> Let's get to the high point. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. Let's see, I'm going to slow down here for a sec. Because as we, we come to church and, and all those things that were in the beginning of chapter 4 especially, the ups and downs, how we are accountable to God, all of that. I love this high point because it's about to explode within our lives. First of all, Jesus Christ is the high priest. And and, and it's said that way in such a way so that we would never make a mistake. There is none greater than the Savior. None. There's no man on the planet greater than the Savior. No one. There, well, let's, let's, let's get, there's no woman on the planet greater than the Savior. I'm going to be equal. I'm going to be fair, okay? <laughs> so there's no one greater than the Savior. And to me, as it says, hold firmly to what we believe. So can I ask a question? What do you believe? What do you believe? Does what you believe line up with Scripture? Does what you believe line up with the way you are accountable to God? I mean, because there's a huge connection. I believe this way, and yes, I'm accountable to God, and yes, it lines up with his commands. It lines up with his teachings. Um, Let me very quickly give you the easiest one. And I did this, I believe, on Easter or whatever. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, even for those hard days, that's me paraphrasing, (laughs) with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Did I quote that all the way right? I believe I did. How I love God is how I'm accountable to him. How I love God then affects everyone else that surrounds me. Remember, this, who is your neighbor? And Jesus goes into it very deep. That person gives me a belief system. What do I believe? Pastor, some of you are thinking, that was too easy to say stuff like that. You want some hard ones? Go to the Ten Commandments and connect it with that. One of the things that, that, that I did not quote on the, the Scripture that I said were love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, At the end, it said, and all the laws will fall underneath this. If you do this, guess what? Uh, 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 Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. There is only one God, and you are to to worship God. Uh, uh, Do do not steal. Do not not covet. Do not uh, commit adultery. Do not uh, kill. All these things. Now, remember this, that that was Ten Commandments, Jesus even made them broader. 
right? Do not commit adultery. Don't look at a woman that way with lust. Ready? Let's be fair. Don't look a man that way with lust. Do not kill. If you hate your brother, or already, if you hate your sister, I'm going to be fair the whole time here, it is the same thing. See, Christ made us more account. He brought to our mind this accountability to God is so huge that you know what, ready? That's, it's a low point. This is so hard to do. I don't even like that person. This is so hard to do. Did you see? That is the coolest car I've seen. I wish I had that. I want that car. I wish they, I could take it from them. Covet, okay? It is hard. I, not that I would go and take someone's car. <laughs> I'm just trying to example. You know, it is that in our lives, things surround us that make life very difficult to actually do as what we would say God would want us to obey and do. Reality. Which the high point is that there is a Savior who gave us the right way to do things if we would just believe. He is in heaven, and we hold on to what he has taught us. Let me go to verse 15 very quickly here. Hebrews chapter 4. This high priest, Jesus Christ, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. I look at that verse right there with encouragement. Some people look at that verse and go, you know what? you got to sin. In fact, he understands my weaknesses. He understands when I make my mistakes. He understands what I know are my failures. He understands when I choose to disobey God. He understands all of that. In fact, he went through all the same thing, but he didn't sin. But I'm not, and here's our excuse. I'm not Christ. I'm not Jesus. I'm not God. And yet, those are the first steps to our failure right there. Because God is holy, and he has given each person the Holy Spirit to guide and direct if we would just begin a path of asking. But here, he still understands my mistakes. See, here's the difference. There's one thing about planning out your sins and another thing of making mistakes and knowing the high priest, Jesus Christ, who died for me, he has this forgiveness. He has this, this grace and mercy for me and my mistakes because he knows everything about every mistake I make. And that to me is such encouragement. Not that I go out and... and do the mistakes, but when they happen, wow, I have the greatest of greats that forgives me if I will just ask. Now, and before I get to 16, there is a difference between Sunday morning, oh, God, please forgive me. I, I did not like that person. Or, God, please forgive me because I did this over here I know you didn't like. Or, God, please forgive me. And you walk out these doors like a teenager. What? I know I've told this before because it's always in my thought process of how it looks. God, please forgive me. It's Sunday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and you do all this holy, 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 holy. And then you walk out the door and you're talking to your friend Monday morning. What time is the party on Friday so we can get so wasted? See, I'm going to go back with those old terms. Or so plastered. Or so, let's get just so high. Or let's do this. Or let's do that. Let's do all of this. So much so that we, we, we completely lose all of our senses. I can't wait. That is not how forgiveness works. Repenting and turning away from sin means exactly that. God, I am sorry I did that, and please help me not to do it again because it was bad this time. You, don't th you think it's going to change the next weekend? No. What's bad is bad. Stop disobeying God. And so... As Friday draws close, 
Maybe Thursday we should be on our knees. God, Friday's coming, and they want me to party. Maybe I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. Please help me. I, I, I don't know what other terms to, to give it. You, you want to know how, how it should be? Because some of us are in our 50s and 60s and, and uppers and lowers. Let's just place in the sin that we know is sin within our lives and say, you know what? I'm tired of walking out of a Sunday morning, and I really want to change and obey you, God. Beautiful thing is, he, this is why I call it encouragement. He will do that. That's what I believe. So, verse 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Understand what I'm saying? As I did all that, oh, sin, 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 sin. When I sin, it, I go to the mercy seat. I beg for forgiveness so that I will change. And, and man, come to, come to Wednesday night, Bible, Wednesday night. Wednesday, 4 p.m. Bible study or join on a Zoom or whatever because there's things that are so connected. And you know what? Because in my head, um, as I go to the mercy seat for forgiveness, and I know God will do it no matter what I have done, let's say it's the worst thing on the planet, and I did it. The high priest, Jesus Christ, who died for me, will forgive me. Yet I also learned in a Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon Bible study that if I was to go out and someone sinned against me in a little way and I shook them and shook them and shook them and I threw them in prison and said, you owe me. <laughs> the way that story went in Matthew was that person that was forgiven with mercy where that high, high debt was thrown in prison, <clears throat> was thrown in prison to pay his debt that was forgiven. <clears throat> Pardon me. Mercy is huge. <clears throat> I'll never match God's. But I was, <coughs> excuse me, I will strive to do it. I will strive not only to obtain mercy, but to learn from God to give it. The best thing, see, mercy mercy is for, for the things I've done wrong. I know that that will be forgiven. The grace part is the assistance given to me. See, I, I, see as I was studying this, I was like, you know, it's huger than that. Yes, I do. But I want to know this one thing, that God's grace is so big that no matter what I come up against, his grace actually is overabundantly given to me, something that I'm, I'm not even expecting, but God already sees my steps down the road, and he has everything ready so that when I come to this point, I've already got it. That's how my grace is. I'm already ready for you to give you this assistance. Tonight, uh, another scripture um, is you, he he provides the great escape. So let me close with this. Like I said, Hebrews chapter four, highs and lows, highs and lows. It is all, the end result. See, it's kind of like life. I don't know if any of you have had that life where it's like, woohoo, I'm always going up, <laughs> because there's a lot of lows as you live out a life. But the beauty is the end point doesn't stop. Remember what I said at the beginning of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4? That resting place, that promise still stands today. It still stands for you and I. Now, with this grace and mercy that goes along with all that path that I'm walking, that grace and mercy, let me ask this question. I think it's a question. Yes. Why Share about God's mercy and grace God has given to you with others. Let me, let me make it maybe clearer. You've received mercy from God. You have received grace from God. And why don't you share that with others? 
I know that there's people, in fact, it took me talk just this morning. I know there's people that share the things within their lives, the ups, the downs, and how God brings them through that whole thing with others. And be persistent. Be uh, vigilant. Continue on. Never let your stories stop. Now, remember I said God will direct you to who you are talking to, but there is a divine purpose in the stories that you tell of grace and mercy of God. Ready? Come on, uh, Lauren and, and Pastor Mark. This is my closing verse. Why share about God's mercy and grace with others that he has done to you? In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, uh, it's the English Standard Version says this. For the grace of God has appeared. Right, and just so we can clar clarify, Jesus. For the grace of God has appeared. Why did he appear? Bringing salvation for all people. As I said earlier, it's not about finger pointing. It's not about these people will never make it to heaven. It's not about any of that because I know the one who has grace and mercy came for all people. And see, this was written a long, long time ago, okay? And I stand here, me personally, holding on. To, you know what? My Savior died for me with grace and mercy, which equals forgiveness and direction, with the Holy Spirit, and the end point has never left my sight. You know, in Moses' and Joshua's time, especially Moses, standing up there, looking out, conversation with his father, God, seeing the promised land, uh, the land of rest, milk and honey, all that, and he was not going to cross over to it, was he? I stand at a point where I see the end point. And I'm like, wow, God, first of all, thank you for never stopping that promise. Thank you for having a place for me. And some days, thank you for making it as simple as just believing. But God, I don't turn away with that. Help me with this next step too. As we get ready to sing, let's pray together. God, we thank you for this day, especially. Thank you for your love. Thank you for never, ever, ever giving up. Thank you for placing the end point in sight so that as everything that comes our way on this planet, everything that comes our way in the steps of our life are just a, a whispering wind that will soon fade away. But the end point, eternity with you, because first of all, we believe in the Savior, Jesus Christ, dying for us and bringing about salvation, salvation for me, for others, for all. God, thank you for that. It helps striving the steps ahead. Help us with those steps. If there's someone here that does not know you that way, that doesn't even think about an end point, that doesn't even think about obeying or anything, God, allow your Holy Spirit to place upon their soul, their spirit, their, their mind, the need to change, the need to follow you, to receive that change. Thank you for the mercy and grace that you have for them. May they be reminded. As we are about to leave this place, God, we ask that we will draw closer to you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Right.
to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is the soul and his word. So shall my walk be close with God, calm and serene my frame. So pure light shall mark the road that leads me to Beautiful last verse. A pure light leads me to the Lamb. Don't ever forget it. Look for the light. <laughs> okay. I told you there's ups and downs, and, and, and so I'm gonna, this is happy in my thought. Ready? Go to the light. Sometimes they say, don't go to the light. Go to the light. <laughs> That's what I want for each and every one of you. So good having you worshiping with us this morning. As I said, look around. There's those that are unable to be in here. Give a, a, a hello, um, however you can to them, and uh, just uplift some spirits. Wednesday, 4 p.m., Bible study, Matthew chapter 19, down toward that 16-ish. You'll see it's about blessing the children or something like that down in there. That's where we're at. You go ahead and join us at 4 p.m. on Wednesday or next Sunday at 1045 and, uh, for worship. And uh, oh, check out the things. Hello again Wednesday. That's a blurb on there if you like watching. What in the world is the pastor doing today? <laughs> um, Go ahead and check stuff out like that. Uh, uh, you know what? Now is the time. I guess I close with why should we share what God's mer mercy and his grace for us? Go ahead and invite someone. As you look around, you see there's plenty of space so someone can come and sit. Don't stop asking someone, to come and, and, and be joining in the, the joy of community. Man, it's so good to see each and every one of you. As we come out these doors, God, we ask a blessing upon those that are here, those that are listening also, God. Just bless them for this day. Help us as a people to see that pure light and to share that path with others. In Jesus' holy name, amen. <laughs>